Russian soldiers are writing on Telegram. Their most terrible weapon is the Caesar. All in all, this weapon is just from another century compared to most of the weapons we have. The enemy has a few of them and takes great care of them. These French howitzers cost the Russian artillerymen an enormous number of lives. It's time for Ukraine to start preparing to reclaim the initiative in 2025. This process should not be rushed and will require heightened efforts from Europe. This could possibly be the final U.S. package, particularly if Trump is elected. It will afford Europe and Ukraine an additional year, during which production will increase. 2024 will be challenging as Ukraine's mobilization will require months to yield results, aid delivery takes time, and defensive lines are not yet fully prepared. Nevertheless, Ukraine will receive sufficient aid from Europe, the US, and its own production to endure the year. At the close of this year, Ukraine will be well prepared to defend itself against Russian aggression, which is a positive development. Nevertheless, Ukraine should also concentrate on preparing to regain the initiative in the future, without rushing the process. It's essential to dedicate sufficient time to mobilize and train a significant number of personnel to replace losses in existing brigades and form new ones. Ukraine needs to rotate brigades while also increasing the number of brigades at the front lines and in reserve. Ukraine's goals extend beyond self-defense. It also seeks to recapture its territories. This endeavor requires mobilizing personnel, enhancing European and Ukrainian production capacity, and making long-term commitments to procurement. Every avenue must be explored, particularly in a scenario where future U.S. aid may not be forthcoming. Europe must significantly increase its support to Ukraine, seeking new approaches to enhance aid, such as securing long-term orders and sourcing equipment from non-EU sources. A video of a Russian Orlan-10 reconnaissance drone being shot down by a Soviet Strela-10 surface-to-air missile system using Jordanian 9M37M-9M333 missiles. The lack of thermal vision allows the Russian to dismantle Ukrainian defenses at night, unfortunately. In the Seversky area, Russian sappers cleared the way for assault groups of Tula paratroopers. The soldiers removed the minefields that the Ukrainians had installed in front of their defense line. Basically, all work takes place at night. At night, we are not particularly visible. We do not attract attention. The enemy doesn't have that many drones with night vision, emphasized the commander of an engineer platoon with the call sign, Bolt. Russia. On May 14, 2023, a military conscription office was set on fire in Murmansk. 33-year-old Andrei Takach has now been criminally charged with justification of terrorism for his comment on this video of the arson on the social network Vikontakte. Wild Hornets test smart drones with a neural network on Ukrainian electronics. In the video, the drone has a neural network and a target tracker. With the help of a smart system, it itself determines the targets on the battlefield, vehicles, infantry. The operator only needs to pick one of the identified targets and select it with a button on the remote control. The neural network is on a Ukrainian-made microcomputer measuring 30x30, that is, it is compactly mounted in a drone. In addition, the drone you see in the tests is assembled from Ukrainian parts, flight controller, engine regulator, video transmitter, camera, microcomputer, radio receiver. In the near future, we will have a lot of work to increase the combat potential of the Ukrainian armed forces. But for this, we will continue to need your support. In future, even more interesting developments. Slovaks. You are amazing. This is one example of how people can do great things when they are united. Thank you, friends. A crowdfunding campaign in Slovakia to buy artillery shells for Ukraine has exceeded its target of Euro 1M, 
850,000 pounds, less than 48 hours after it was launched. The campaign is a response to the Slovak cabinet's refusal to join an initiative by the Czech government to buy up hundreds of thousands of shells for the Ukrainian armed forces. We have to drive Putin out of Ukraine. We have to defeat him, said Otto Simko, a Holocaust survivor and veteran of the 1944 Slovak national uprising against the Nazis. Aged 99, he helped kickstart the campaign to challenge the government's policy. I lived through the Second World War. I fought in it. I can tell you there was no point negotiating with Hitler and there is no point negotiating with Putin, Simko told the BBC from Bratislava. By Friday afternoon, more than 32,000 people had donated more than 2 million euros since it launched on Tuesday afternoon. The money will go directly to the Czech government's initiative. We're really pleasantly surprised at the huge force it's awoken, said Zuzana Izakova from the Peace to Ukraine initiative, which is running the effort in conjunction with the Czech-based Endowment Fund for Ukraine. Thank you, Estonia. Thank you, Prague. A rally in Prague in support of Estonia's suggestion on military support to Ukraine. They suggest that each EU country should allocate no less than zero, 25% of its GDP on support for Ukraine. That should total to your 120 billion, which would exceed Russia's yearly war expenditures. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.